Hello friends, Ginny D here, and the other day I was looking at my character sheet for one of my home games and I was like, huh, I have inspiration. I keep forgetting that that's a thing. How did I even get that? And it occurred to me that I have never played in, or quite frankly DM'd, a game where the inspiration mechanic was used consistently. Most of the time we just forget about it. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that it's a pretty powerful tool to leave on the table. So today I'm going to explain why I think more tables should be using inspiration, and then I'm going to give you 10 different ways to award it to your players. Let's get started. Before we talk inspiration, quick reminder that I am a fake geek girl who is just pretending to be into D&D in order to sell you my D&D inspired pinup calendar, which is available for pre-order now. As you can see, I only make weekly 10 to 15 minute long videos with deep dives into D&D topics in order to trick you, once a year, into paying me for a fun artistic cosplay project that also happens to include my legs. So disappointing. What's next? Women learning to read? Wearing pants? The world really is going to hell in a handbasket. The link is in the description in case you want to support this absolutely scandalous behavior. So, what is inspiration and how does it work? The first thing to note is that inspiration, capital I, is different from bardic inspiration. Just yet another instance of D&D applying the same word to multiple different mechanics in order to generate maximum confusion. Inspiration, minus the bardic, gives you advantage on a single attack, save, or check of your choice anytime. The DM can award it to players when they play to their character's personality traits. The Player's Handbook also notes that players can gift their inspiration point to another player if they so choose. You either have inspiration or you don't. Those points don't stack. This is presumably to encourage players to use it instead of hoarding it. I will note that in the rules as written, you're not supposed to be able to use inspiration after you've already rolled. Advantage requires that you roll a second die as you make the check, so you can't wait to see if you fail and then try again. However, a lot of tables house rule that inspiration can be used after the roll, and honestly, I think that's totally fine as long as everyone at the table is clear about the rule. I think one reason a lot of DMs don't use inspiration that much is that the way the player's handbook lays it out, it's primarily meant to be used as a reward for players role-playing in line with their traits ideals, bonds, and flaws, which is obviously a lot for a DM to keep track of for every single player at their table. If you do plan on using it this way, I would recommend having a section in your DM notes that's easy to access, where you can jot down each of your player's personality traits for quick reference. That said, the inspiration section in the player's handbook makes it super clear that DMs can choose to award inspiration for anything they want. So that's what we are going to talk about today, how to customize this system to make it work for your table and your goals. Before we dive into how to use inspiration in your game, we should talk about why. After all, a lot of folks run perfectly successful D&D campaigns without using inspiration at all. Why add another mechanic if it isn't going to improve the game? I think inspiration is a particularly powerful tool for DMs that shouldn't be ignored. At its foundation, it's a carrot that you can use to encourage whatever kind of behavior you want to see more of at your table. When you think about it that way, it can benefit literally any campaign. Ask yourself, what behavior would you like to see more of from your party? Do you want them to be more engaged, more creative, more generous? You can apply inspiration as an incentive to anything you want to see more of. On top of all that, having access to inspiration can also make players more willing to take risks, and can punch up the drama and the excitement of the game overall. Knowing that they can give themselves advantage on a roll can encourage players to try weird or creative things that they might not otherwise be willing to chance. Plus, probability-wise, the more rolls happen at advantage, the higher the likelihood of natural 20s, which can mean more epic moments where you really get to make your players feel heroic. Convinced? Great! Now I am going to suggest 10 different things that you can award inspiration for in your own games to encourage different kinds of play. You don't have to use any of these, of course, but hopefully they'll get the wheels turning and help you brainstorm ways that inspiration can improve your own game. Here we go! At the beginning of every session, ask a character builder question. If you need ideas, I have a video with 50 questions that I will link in the cards. Everybody who gives a thoughtful answer to the question gets an inspiration point for the session. Or if you want to leave things a little bit more freeform, offer an inspiration point to anyone who shares a fun fact about their character before the session starts. This is a great way to incentivize players to be thinking about their character's personality and backstory. And it can be a great way to get people into a role-playing mindset before the session even begins. 
friends. One of the things that I think improves group roleplay the most, but is also the hardest skill to cultivate, is roleplaying generously. If you want to encourage your players to express interest in and engage with the other party members, try awarding inspiration for it. Whenever someone asks a thoughtful question of another player, or engages in conversation with them about their backstory, or otherwise takes notable interest in a story or experience beyond their own, give them inspiration. This is for a very specific kind of table, but I know it's common for DMs to be frustrated by players being late to sessions. If your players don't seem to feel like it's very important to be on time, start awarding inspiration to anyone who's there early, or there at your exact start time. This one has the benefit of also being very easy to manage, because you award the points right at the start, and then you don't have to think about it again until the next session. Remember me! Um... Frida? Francis Summerpike, the gnome cartographer you created for a sponsorship and then left to grapple with my empty existence. I came to you for help and you sent me away. So I took it all the way to the top. Wait, you talked to the sponsor? That's right. I talked to Dungeon Fog, the easy to use, completely customizable map making tool for RPGs. And guess what they said? That it scales really well, so you can make a great looking map in just 10 or 15 minutes, or take your time and use the advanced editing tools to bring your vision to life exactly? No, they said- Ooh, that there's also a public map library, so you can use and edit maps created by over 350,000 other users? Well, yes, they did say that. And they're running an event called Mapvember right now. You get weekly prompts to help you design the perfect five-room dungeon. But more importantly, they were on my side. The team at Dungeon Fog have hearts. And more than 4,500 assets and textures for everything from fantasy to sci-fi. Wait, so what does that mean exactly? You refused to give me a story, so Dungeon Fog did. Now anyone can download my character sheet and learn about my father's tragic disappearance on a cartographical expedition and my little clockwork sparrow atlas and even see a beautiful map of my family store, Summer Pike's Quill and Compass. I suppose people can download it somewhere? Yes, they can. The link is in the description. And they can use the same link to sign up for a free account and get started with Dungeon Fog. And if that's not enough for them, the same way that your shallow little ads weren't enough for me, then they can become a premium member to create unlimited maps and get access to thousands of assets. You win this round, Florence. Francis! I'm still getting paid though, right? If you want to bring your group together and really encourage players to lift each other up, you can try awarding inspiration by popular vote. At the end of every session, have the whole group nominate and vote for a player that they think did some great roleplay, had a really cool moment, or contributed to make this session really great. To avoid favoritism or anyone feeling left out, you can put some guardrails in place, like not letting the same person win two weeks in a row. You can even let the previous week's winner award the next inspiration point to make sure that it gets evenly distributed. This can also be a good choice for DMs who don't want to give out too many inspiration points, because this basically limits it to one or maybe two points per session. Not everyone wants a funny D&D table, but for those who do, you can totally incentivize those fun moments by giving out inspiration when somebody makes the whole table laugh, or generates a really hilarious moment. Be willing to give it to multiple players at once if it's a player-to-player -player interaction that cracks everybody up. After each combat session, award an inspiration point to the MVP from that encounter. Maybe that's the person who landed the killing blow, or the player who risked life and limb to get another character back on their feet after they failed two death saves. Or maybe the player who drew the big bad's attention so another character could land the final strike. It doesn't need to be the one who dealt the most damage. It can be any player who had a particularly exciting or dramatic moment. This can really encourage players to get creative during combat. Okay, hear me out. I know this doesn't really have any bearing on gameplay, but if you start awarding inspiration to anyone who brings food to share, you're going to have a fantastic spread of snacks at every game. Roleplaying in a way that aligns with your character's traits is great, but it's way easier to roleplay to your character's strengths than to their flaws. If you really want to encourage the complication of roleplay that can sometimes disadvantage the player or the party, try awarding inspiration specifically when 
players really embody their character's weaknesses. This can make players feel like it's worth it to take a risk in order to really commit to their character. DMs have enough to pay attention to without adding inspiration into the mix. If you want to take inspiration off your plate and encourage player relationships, try giving players the power to award it to each other for strong roleplay or creative thinking. If you're worried about players abusing it, you can also give yourself ultimate approval power or limit players to awarding one inspiration point per session. Okay, I saved this one for last so that if you hate me after this, at least you will have watched most of the video already. But if you, like me, value a truly grown-worthy pun, you can amp up the punnery of your game by awarding inspiration for truly exceptional wordplay. The main obstacle to inspiration in the games that I've played has just been remembering it. It's easy for DMs to forget to award it, and it's easy for players to forget to use it. It's definitely a habit that everyone will need to get into, and habits take time to learn. As the DM, the more that you can remind players that they have access to inspiration, the quicker they'll get used to it. It might be worth it to allow players to use inspiration after they've already rolled, at least for a few sessions, as an exception, just to get them used to the idea of using it under certain circumstances. And just to note, if your table would benefit from having more inspiration, don't be afraid to give it out more often. The Player's Handbook suggests giving out one inspiration point per player per session, but it's your game, and giving inspiration more freely will also make players feel more comfortable actually using it. There are so many ways to gain advantage on rolls in D&D, I promise it won't break your game to let your players have some good luck on a few more rolls. One of the reasons we all love tabletop role-playing games so much is the freedom. It's the only kind of game where you can do whatever you want and make whatever choices you want, unconstrained by somebody else's pre-written paths. For that reason, I think D&D is the most fun when players have the power of choice. Giving players that power will make them more engaged and feel more rewarded when they succeed. Inspiration is just another tool to allow players to make decisions and influence how the game goes. When they've decided that a particular role is really important, they have the power to do something about it. In my eyes, that's a positive. So, there's 10 ways that you can use inspiration to improve your games. As you can see, you do not have to use inspiration the same way that the player's handbook suggests. If you're planning on changing up how you include inspiration at your table, or if you want to incorporate any other changes to your game's mechanics, you should definitely check out my video about house rules. It's way too easy to accidentally break your game with the wrong house rules if you're not careful. Watch this one next to learn how to vet house rules and then how to put them into place without confusing or overwhelming your players.